Hello, everybody, and welcome to 2022. Uh, my name is Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate, real estate for people who love houses. And this is our Southern California housing market update. And already we're into 2022, and we are seeing some things in the market changing. Now, these things aren't terribly unusual. Uh, nothing is terribly alarming. But I do want to call your attention to some things that are different than already than they were last year. So we're going to jump right into the stats. I know we talked about doing kind of a bit of some predictions. And as I got into doing those, I thought it might be best to do a separate video. So we're going to do that as a bonus video, but it's only going to show up on our YouTube channel. So if you are watching us on Facebook and not on YouTube, you'll want to go ahead uh, and go down to the description below. We have a link to our YouTube channel where you can subscribe so you won't miss any of our videos. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump into our market statistics. We'll pull these up right here and kind of tell you what's changing. So the first thing that I want to talk about is total active listings and and one of the reasons why this is a very, very important um, metric for us is because really more so even than price, we've been talking about availability of housing and, and really more importantly, availability of listings. That's really been the topic of the conversation probably for the last 18 months or more. Um, and you know, this year, one of the things we've noticed is that you know, we started off last year, we were at around 5,000 homes under a million dollars in LA and Orange counties that were active. You know, we're starting at about 3,500, right, under a million. And if you look here, we were maybe around 2,300 uh, this time last year uh, for our one to two million. And now we are below, well below 2,000, right? So we're looking like we're down, um, you know, by 25 to 40% on the listings where we were last year. But one of the things I want to point out is look at this. One of the things you see is that already this is stabilized out a little bit. And this isn't that unusual, right? If we, if we go back and we look here, what happened to new listings? They actually went up as we headed into January, right? As people put their homes in the market. So if you're a buyer out there, there is a little bit of a hope. Um, if you're a seller, you haven't missed the boat. We are still at a very low level. So if you're one of those sellers that has a property that maybe isn't the easiest property to sell, maybe it's something a little bit unusual, this low inventory market really is the market that you want to be in because it means people that might have just brushed your listing and your home aside in the past, they will at least come to look at it. And once they look at it, that's when you really have a chance to, to convince them that it's a home that is going to work for them. So, you know, if you're a buyer, hey, things are turning around a little bit. And if you're a seller, things are still pretty good. Now, moving on to our new listings, right? Um, really, things have completely taken a dive. Um, we are again, even lower than we were at this point last year. I wanna point that out again, probably lower by again, about 20 to 30% in our under 1 million category. If you look here, we're maybe about 1,400, 1,450 houses in the two weeks preceding um, January 4th, 2021. This year, it's more like a little over 1,000. Um, you know, you do see a little bit of good news in our one to two million category. That's a little bit more stabilized. Uh, for those of you who are entry level home buyers, though, you're looking in this under one million zone. And, and really, that might be a little disheartening. But understand that even here, look at the shape of these curves. This is starting to pull out. And I think uh, by next week, we're going to start to see some of that new year, new listings activity come into play. Um, this is normal for our market, really. Things kind of head to sort of a minimal point. That week between Christmas and New Year's is brutal. There is almost no new listings coming in the market. But trust me when I tell you, uh, pretty much starting this week and next week, we're going to see that reverse a little bit. Um, for those of you keeping track, new escrows also took a dive. Um, this is historically not a great period of time, though I will say um, we actually put a buyer into escrow about two days before Christmas. So there are people out there shopping. And I personally think from a buyer's perspective, this is actually a really good time of year for you to be in the market. Uh, even though historically, that may not be the wisdom that you've heard in the past, uh, but it's always been our experience. Um, if you look, these new escrows are also down versus last year. So there's a little bit of parity there. Um, new, new listings are down, but so are the new escrows. 
And what that means is we have a little bit better balance of supply and demand. Now, this is our absorption rate chart. You notice last week things were uh, somewhere up here in the kind of nuts range, but look, they've started to come down a little bit. We are still above 100%, meaning um, you know, we're still seeing a little bit uh, of, of a net decline, but it's not, it's not as much in terms of that relationship between homes coming on the market and homes being snapped up into escrow. I expect that this number is gonna dive a little bit more and that we're gonna settle somewhere in this 90% range. Now, a 90% absorption rate is still a very, very brisk market. So if you're a buyer and a seller, um, if you're a buyer, don't think that suddenly things are gonna be easy for you. They won't, especially if you're looking at the more desirable homes. And if you're a seller, don't think the market's falling apart. It's not, you will still get a lot of activity on a well-priced, well-presented listing. Now, if we look at our closed price, we kind of see something interesting happen, happening. And I, I again, I, I say this disclaimer every time, but I get calls and messages from people. This is closed pricing, meaning these are transactions that were negotiated four to six weeks ago, not contracts that were negotiated last week. Um, we, see, we see some robustness in our, in our upper end 75th percentile with prices kind of heading towards some new higher levels. I expect these to grow in the spring. Uh, median, our median actually dipped a little bit. I was surprised by that, by this middle of the market range. I don't know if that's just an artifact because we are looking back towards deals that were around Thanksgiving. Uh, negotiated, but look at our entry level, had a dip and bounce back up. So, you know, again, my favorite part of these charts is looking at the long term. It's not looking at what happened in this particular week. Um, and I think here you get an idea of the trend of what's happening in pricing. Now, this is another sort of, um, you know, proxy we use for demand, and that's called still percent still active after 14 days on the market. Now, I will tell you that one of the little idiosyncrasies of this measurement is that it tends to overweight what has happened in the last three or four days. And what's happened is we had a whole bunch of listings hold off, right, around Christmas. That's what you see here, this dip, right? Because there just wasn't anything on the market. And then a whole bunch of people put their homes in the market in the last couple of days. And of course, those homes are still active. So whenever you have these holiday periods, these numbers can get a little wonky. And I think you see back here around Thanksgiving, we had kind of a similar sort of seesaw effect. Watch this is going to dip and head down again next week. So don't think that this means demand is slackening. It really isn't. Um, we're just in a holiday week. I also want to talk about our close to list ratio, right? This is when homes actually close, how close were they to list price? And what, what we're trying to measure with this, let me go off screen share here. When we're trying to measure this ratio, what we're really looking at is it's that relationship between what sellers think their home is worth and how the market is actually reacting to it. And so what this means is when we see this number over 100% and by how much, it means on average, the sellers are a bit more timid with their prices and the buyers think the homes and are willing to bid up. And even though this came down a little bit for under 1 million, I mean, still on average being 102% means on average, $500,000 homes were selling for 510 or homes that were listed at $500,000. So it's on average. I mean, some homes do go for less than list price and some will go for more than this. But whenever we take this aggregate result, meaning we're combining all of the listing data together, that's where we kind of see this graph. And you know, we would have expected this to take a dive back down to around 100% and it didn't do it this year. So again, a sign that maybe the spring is gonna be a little different than last year. Let's also take a look at days on market for our new contracts, right? These are homes that actually went into escrow and we see that days on market number creeping up, but it's still nowhere, not even close really to where we were last year at the same point, which was right around 50 days and in the mid thirties. We're seeing them come up a little bit, but I actually see that. That might tell us a little bit more about how the spring is going. Because if we notice that as new inventory comes into the market and buyers just snap it up, that should push this days on market number back down again. What this raising tells me might be happening, and this is just a conjecture here, 
is that because of a lack of inventory, buyers are taking a second look at homes that have been on the market for a while, and those are finally going into escrow. Because this is not just days on market of homes in the market, it's days on market for new contracts. Those are homes that actually went into escrow. And then we have our affordability chart. Because that median went down a little bit, it means we bump right down into this, this 110 to 120% pocket. And just as a reminder for everyone, this is based on where prices were in 2018, which was our 100%. They actually dipped. And this is our payment on a median priced home. So what this is trying to give us is a relative notion, including interest ratings, including all of that data. And you can see that versus 2018, we're still hovering in that 110 to 115% mark, but it's important to note, interest rates did drop a little bit and then went back up. And I don't wanna scoop myself on our kind of predictions, uh, our predictions video, but one of the things that we do see kind of happening is, is I do think we're gonna see interest rates rise over the next 12 months. Um, but I don't know how fast that's gonna happen. I think there's some economic storm clouds on the horizon, some things that are telling me that you know, the Fed may raise rates a little bit, but we might not see that big, large scale breaks put on the economy because I don't think it's quite as strong. The new Omicron variant, uh, the number of abs the absenteeism for businesses, all these things will come into play. And we're going to talk about that in our predictions for 2022 uh, video, which will be coming out shortly. Uh, anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this, if you're like me or like a lot of people, um, you know, heading back to work. It's a little bit rough, a little bit rusty, but I hope we provided some information for you. As always, if you are looking to buy or sell real estate in Southern California, we would love to help you with that and lend our expertise. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell uh, so you will see our future videos, and we will see you again real soon.